All right. It's a comment I've been getting a lot recently, so I think it's time for a whole update existential crisis video. A lot of people been asking, am I still really an Apple sheep? If I have so many criticisms with Apple between not liking the updated iMac design or not recommending AirPods Max, not recommending the iPhone 12 Pro, am I really who I once was? Am I really the guy you subscribe to that was here to just defend Apple no matter what, right? Is that actually what the channel has been? Personally, I'm I'm here to remind you, not really. The whole reason I adopted the Apple Sheep mentality and ended each video with this is your Apple Sheep here was because I wanted to get past the name calling and I wanted it to be very clear and obvious from the beginning that I am biased towards Apple, which once again, I will remind you guys the times that I believed personally myself that Apple was in the right and a lot of people disagreed with me. So I stood up for them because that's ultimately what I want this channel to be. Yes, I'm biased towards Apple. I have heavy Apple preferences but when I believe they make the right call, I'm going to defend it. And similarly, if Apple makes the wrong call and Apple does something that I don't think was right, I'm also gonna say that. And ultimately, I don't think this channel would be as interesting or as entertaining if it was literally just me playing a character that would be somewhat dishonest. And throughout history, I always defended Apple no matter what, okay? Even if I personally believed them to be wrong and I went on camera and decided to start defending them, I don't think that would be ethical, and I also think people would see through that bullcrap pretty quickly, and lots of people in the past probably expect that's what I've done, but truthfully and honestly, in the past when Apple decided to remove the charge brick from iPhone packaging, I defended that because I believed it was the right call, and when Apple ditched the headphone jack on the iPhone 7, I genuinely believed and still do to this day that that was the right call and they were making the right decisions. Ditching all those legacy ports in favor of USB-C and Thunderbolt on the MacBook line, I defended because I genuinely saw that as the futurist mentality of let's get on to a better standard, a better port, that we can do more with that technology. So I defended it. I'm in favor of it. Or if Apple decides they want to start charging $350 for an iPad keyboard accessory, I'm the one guy saying, yes, it's expensive, but I don't actually think it's overpriced because there's nothing else on the market that can make an iPad that more capable and make it really a laptop replacement for so many people out there. I defended the design of AirPods when everyone else was memeing them and saying how stupid they looked. I knew they were great. I was pumped for them from day one and I'm still a big fan of them and ultimately what I hope you guys can remember is that while I'm not going to defend Apple on every single decision they make that would be unrealistic and dishonest, I am still somewhat of a team Apple player here because my channel obviously is mainly covered covering Apple news, and sometimes we stray off that path a little bit, but for the most part, that's likely why so many of you are still watching, because you are interested in Apple, whether or not you love them or hate them, you like seeing my opinion on them, or you like seeing my take on an Apple design choice, and I think when you become so in love with a brand, and you become so accustomed to them surpassing your expectations and revealing designs that you just fall in love with, like my Apple Watch is just so unmatched by competitors that every time I put this thing on, I think that there's really no other way I can imagine another brand competing with this. And the same thing with Mac OS. So well designed and so well optimized for a keyboard and mouse input and so heavily integrated within the ecosystem, I cannot imagine anything else coming close. And probably as I get used to covering Apple and reporting on every tiny little change they bring to their website, every tiny little rumor that comes their way, when you are heavily invested into everything a company does, when they do anything, and I mean literally anything, that does not exactly meet or exceed your expectations, it probably becomes more noticeable and obvious. And what a criticism may come off as is me saying I hate a new design or me saying I despise this decision Apple made or I hate the price of a certain product. It's likely because for this job and for this role as the Apple sheep of YouTube, I have to have a very precise and keen eye across every design choice they make, and while I'm still in love with the brand, and while I'm still a huge fan of this ecosystem, and I feel like nothing else on the market comes close to competing with the iPhone, iPad, Watch, AirPods, and Mac user experience, if there is something that's introduced to this grand ecosystem that I really love and that I really appreciate, yeah, I'm gonna talk about it, because it probably wouldn't be too practical for me to just do videos on mostly Apple products, like 85 to 90% of my videos, probably
probably more, just being about Apple, if I just said non-stop nice things about it all the time. You guys know I love the iPad Pro, and you know there's only so many ways I can rearrange my words into saying that, yes, I still love my iPhone 12 mini. Yes, I still love AirPods. Yes, I still love the Apple Watch. I can't just upload love videos constantly, so when Apple does make a decision that I don't like, or when Apple does make a call that I don't think was a good one, that, of course, is going to get some of my attention, because I'm used to having everything meet or exceed expectations, and when it doesn't, yeah, I have some thoughts on it, and I'm gonna tell you in detail as to why this doesn't work for me, or why I don't care for this particular design or price point. And frankly, I think that's just the way a lot of YouTube channels have to work. It wouldn't really be sustainable for me to just constantly tell you all the great things about Apple products, because there's only so many ways you can say that, but there are plenty of ways for you to say, this needs improvement, or actually, I can think of several ways they could have done this better, or I can think of many reasons as to why this product is not priced the way it should be, or doesn't include the accessories it should. There's just so much more to dive into with a criticism, and I hope you guys know that my direction with the channel is not purely based on trying to make videos that I think will be controversial, or trying to make videos that I think will do better, because ultimately the reason I don't do sponsored videos, and the reason I don't do reaction videos anymore, is purely because I'm very picky with the type of audience and the type of viewers I attract. I don't want to just get views and likes and dislikes and subscribers for the sake of growing my channel or for the sake of gaining numbers. I want to be completely 100% honest with you guys, and I don't want to say anything that I don't believe in my mind and heart, and I don't want to cater to a certain demographic just so that I can get better approval or just so that I can get more money. That's not the direction I want to take this channel in. It has to stem from honesty first, and it has to stem from this is what I believe, and I hope you guys can watch my videos and understand Drew is saying exactly what he believes, and I may disagree with that, which I welcome, and that's fine, and that's why I think a lot of the comments in videos are not usually comments of agreement, because normally if you agree with someone as you're watching a video, you don't see a point in adding to the comments agreed or yes, I agree with you, but if someone you're watching says something you disagree with and you know exactly why you disagree with that, that's when you're going to speak up. That's when you're going to reply on Twitter. That's when you're going to leave a big paragraph in the comments because you have reached a point of tension, because you have reached an area where you have found disagreement. But a lot of you that disagree with me all the time, you still keep coming back, you still keep watching, and I'm not exactly sure why, but I have to believe that it's because there are certain types of points I make, or there are certain types of videos that you find entertainment value in, or that you find interesting to watch, so that's why you keep coming back. And in that same way that a lot of you don't really chime in until you've found something you've disagreed with, that's how I hope a lot of you guys can look at my relationship with Apple. I love them, and I'm going to continue to try to experience the latest and greatest from them, and I want to continue to appreciate everything they do because I love the way they've integrated their ecosystem into my lifestyle. But yeah, when they do something I do find tension with or disagreement on, that's when I'm going to have more to say. That's when there's going to be a bit more disagreement. So I hope people watching out there don't feel like, oh, Drew used to like Apple, but now he doesn't anymore. Because I still recall times in the past where I wished Apple would switch to USB-C, and for a long time they hadn't. And I remember being very frustrated that Apple called it the 9.7-inch iPad Pro when I kept saying it should have been called the iPad Air 3 and they decided not to call it that. Way back when, I recall being so confused that Apple would charge $17,000 for a gold Apple Watch. I just thought it was ridiculous and I don't think that I got a lot of hype and I don't think I got a lot of views back in the day for complaining about Apple products because, let's be honest, so many people do that these days. But what gets a lot of people onto my channel and more hooked on my channel is when I have a more controversial opinion of this is something Apple is doing that I think is the right call, and I'm going to explain why it's the right call, even though most of the internet disagrees, or I'm going to say a bending iPhone or a bending iPad isn't as big a deal as people are making it out to be. Things that a lot of people go, ooh, no, true, I don't agree with that. That's what kind of puts me on the map. That's what gets a lot of people on my channel. So I think that's what creates the unrealistic illusion that Drew in the past would defend literally anything Apple did because there were a handful of circumstances in which everyone hated something they were doing, but I defended them, and that makes everyone have this blanket assumption that 
means that if Apple does anything, Drew has to like it, which isn't true. And I hope that can be more apparent. And I also hope that moving forward, we can acknowledge it's not so black and white for everything, including you guys, I'm sure. There are certain things that Apple has done that you've loved and probably a lot of things Apple has done that you haven't loved. And it's unrealistic to assume someone is going to be completely one way or the other on something. Similarly here, there's a lot of things Apple has done right. And I think there's a lot of things they've done that I love. And there's also, of course, a bunch of things they've done that I didn't like. And I see a lot of hypocrisy in the comments on when I say something that I like about Apple products and everyone says, well, Drew, you're a sheep. Of course you love something they've done. But also when I start complaining about Apple products, just a day after posting a praise video about how much I love something, people will all start saying, well, Drew, you're just a hater. You're just a troll. You're just saying bad things about them to get views. It's not true. I'm literally just telling you how I feel. That's the core mission of this channel is to fill you in on what I think is going to happen and fill you in on how I feel about certain design choices. And you may or may not agree. That's fine. But I hope you can understand that ultimately, yes, I am still an Apple sheep. I'm still going to side with a lot of Apple's decision making. And I believe that most of the time they make the right call. And I think that they honor the choices I care about in tech products better than any other tech company right now. So that's why I'm still branding myself as the Apple sheep. And guess what? It's okay for the sheep to stray from the path a bit. Sometimes the shepherd breaks the sheep's leg with a white bezeled cane, but he's still part of the flock. This is your Apple sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.